This is Geek News Central. My name is Todd Cochran, and the stories that leads today's show are as follows. The U.S. Army has banned DJI drones. Hmm, why is that? We'll talk about that. Tech giants transferring technology to Japan. Talk about the troubling situation with that that's going on. Michelin, yes, the car company, have come out with a pretty amazing 3D printed tire. We're going to talk about tricking a self-driving car. And now, not only is AI going to be doing everything on the web for us, it's going to be monitoring us when we sleep. Of course, plus all the news of the day, including those stories we just talked about. And I want to welcome you to episode 1,218 of the Geek News Central podcast for Monday, August 7th. This show is sponsored in part by GoDaddy.com and listeners just like you. Support the show today at GeekNewsCentral.com forward slash insider or PayPal.me forward slash Geek News. You can pick up Ohana gear at Cafe Press dot com forward slash ohana store you want to give a warm warm welcome to all the uh, new listeners and of course a bigger welcome to all the long time listeners and viewers of the show thanks for being here thanks for being part of the ohana and for those of you who don't know what ohana means that means family here in hawaii so uh, coming to you as it's just getting dark a little earlier start tonight so uh got lucky with that Everything just kind of fired on all cylinders tonight, so we got a almost a 30-minute head start. But if you're brand new, it's really, really, really important that you take just you know, just a minute and get over to geeknewcentral.com. And when you're over on the website, just get subscribed to the show via the Apple Podcasts on Android, via email, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, standard RSS feed, and you have no idea what I'm talking about, just click the More Subscribe options on the bottom. And then, of course, they're linked to the newsletters on the website as well. We want you to get subscribed to the show so you never miss a single episode. That way, after you are totally blown away by the show tonight, you're going to say, man, I want to be subscribed. <laughs> and we want you to get subscribed. So uh, I hope that occurs. But, uh, of course, hey, if you have comments on today's show, it's real easy. Easy, easy, easy. Email me here, geeknews at gmail.com. You can follow me on Twitter at geek news you can of course uh join our slack channel by sending me an email and let me know that you want to join the slack channel you can follow me on google plus and on facebook of course just search for my name todd cochran you'll find me you can watch the show on the roku via the tech podcast channel you can watch on the apple tv we just slowed up the show name you can listen on the amazon echo by telling the device to play the latest edition of the Geek News Center podcast. You can listen on Stitcher, watch or view at Blueberry.com, or you can tell your Google Home device to play the podcast Geek News Central. Partner shows include No Better Than Average with Jacob and Jeff, the Gadget Professor, Mr. Don Bain, the Pro Gear site by the GNC team, and believe it or not, we have finally got some people picked <laughs> for the Podcast Legends show. So we'll see if we can get them booked, and maybe we'll have a new episode next week on that. Of course, the new media show, recorded by Rob Greenlee and I every Saturday or Sunday. Seems like the last two weeks it's been Sundays, but we'll be back with you on Saturday next this week. Other than that, that's that's how you get hooked up. That's how you stay connected to the show and the shows within the network. We want you to do that. That's the most important thing, of course. And this show really, you know, I'll be honest with you, would not be possible and have the long legs that we have and be able to do what I do, pay the bills, keep the lights on, put the gas in the car, keep the insurance paid up, which I got a payment coming due. Oh, what's up with insurance these days? Uh, hey, it's our good friends at, at GoDaddy.com, our longtime sponsors of this podcast. And really what it boils down to is it's just simple. All you have to do is visit GeekNewCentral.com forward slash GoDaddy and when you're over on the page, there's a code there for just about every product that you're going to want. Whether it's a 30% discount code on new product purchases, whether it be a server or one of the other products or plans that they have. A 99cent.com, if you've never bought a .com at GoDaddy, you can use that. 
or at least use that code. We got a dollar monthly economy hosting with a free domain. That's for 12 months, 12 bucks for free economy hosting with a domain. A, man, a dollar a month managed WordPress hosting for $12. Includes a free domain. Again, first year, 12 bucks. And I just tried to sneeze on you. No sneeze button here. <laughs> or one month free trial of GoDaddy website builder your choice of personal business or business plus plans. All the codes are on the website. Just click on the link. That'll take it over to GoDaddy. They'll get you a link in. So, you know, really just, you know, just do a tap. And uh, that's going to get you right on the GoDaddy website. It's going to load. It's going to load the deal. And then remember, when you get to the checkout counter at GoDaddy, so something they do from time to time is they will have two years or three-year term selected. Do you want to make sure that you get that? That that lock in of that you're you're still only being charged a buck for the or twelve dollars for the first year, but they will want you to try to pay for year two. You don't have to do that. Just check, just pick one year. All right. Um, if you're gonna pay for two, I'm cool with that because to be honest with you, how it works with this is when you use my code. If you're a new customer at GoDaddy, the key is new customer using my code. Um, doesn't matter if you sign up for one, two, or three years. They love it when you do three. Uh, for me, it's it's you use that code a single time and and we're good. So I definitely appreciate your your ongoing support. Did get the report in on the July numbers? A good July, really good July. And uh, I, I'll be able to buy an extra bag of groceries. So you know, thanks very much for your ongoing support here of the sponsor, and uh, it is most most definitely appreciated. Um, I got a web, you know what's going on here is, and it's annoying because I've got a Wired article linked up on the, uh, is the first article of the night tonight, and I keep getting, uh, about every 30 seconds, it's given me a commercial for Gentleman's Jack. <laughs> it's one of those big ads that's on the front of the page, and then, you know, 30 seconds it goes away, and then, and then it opens up again it's really annoying okay now i'm getting a, a, a uh, genesis whatever whoever makes the genesis model um i'm getting a car ad now so um okay i know you got to make money there wired but please stop okay um let me go ahead and let me just talk here just a few minutes before we get into the content um had a comment come in someone said hey todd the 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 energy level has been down since episode 1200. And I really want you guys to know is what I've done is I quit taking energy drinks. And so I'm starting to show usually 7.30, 8 o'clock Hawaii time. I've been up like today since 4.30 in the morning. So I'm already running on what, 16, you know, 15 and a half hours, you know, 16 hours um, before I even start the show. Most podcasters, they, they can't handle <laughs> doing this. So tonight, um, I uh, took a, an energy drink, small one. It's one that I know just makes my nose run. So I'm trying to keep the energy up for you guys. But, you know, really what it's about is, you know, for many, many years, and you guys could see it, those of you that watch the show, you saw me get a second chin, you know, the belly got bigger, you know, at, at one time I probably was as high as 220, 225, and when I started this, um, you know, it's a weight loss, weight loss program that, you know, basically pushing a plate away and going exercising in, in middle of January, you know, I was at 215 when I started that regimen, and, you know, I'm weighing in on the scale right now, 189, 190. And progressively, you know, moving it the scale to the right. So it's I have taken a uh, a distinct focus on trying to be healthier. And I don't always succeed in the food I'm eating, but I'm you know I'm working out uh, four or five days a week, um, and I can tell the difference. But I'm still putting in these massive, massive hour days. Um, it's just 
the way things are. I, you know, and be honest with you, those of you that have been here for a long, long time, you already know this. Uh, there's not enough of me to go around. It just, there, it's just, there's not enough <laughs> between, you know, Raw Voice, Blueberry, the show, um, wife, family, kids, you know, all this stuff. There's just not enough of, of me to go around. And it's been that way for years. But the only, you know, so adding a couple of hours uh, every day to dedicating to going to the gym and working out, uh, me, because I'm, I'm still doing the same amount of uptime. I am sleeping a little earlier because, you know, I've gotten, you know, here we are. We're, we're 13 years in, folks, right? Uh, I'm not as young as, you know, I, I'm, you know, we started this show. <laughs> you know, I'm 53. So we started this show when I was 40, right? So uh, it's, it's, you know, we've got some time here. So, and again, too many years in, with my ass in this seat doing nothing but doing this and working. And uh, so if I seem a little, like, done at the end of the day, and when I start the show, um, it is. That's because, probably because I am. But, you know, the... We, I've always recorded the show at this time of night um, since I started. Uh, when I was in the Navy and uh, dealing with the kids and everything else, it was 8 o'clock. And here, it's, uh, you know, doing with the uh, wife, doing with the kids, it's 8 o'clock. So that's just, you know, it's okay. I'm, I'm happy to do it. But, um, and if I don't, you don't get 100% from me all the time, I, I apologize. Um, the only alternative is really not a good, al there is no al different alternative at this point. If we ever get to the point <laughs> where someone comes in with a big, fat, big check and buys raw voice, um, I may, I may get a little more time, but I, you know, that's not going to happen anytime soon. So, um, but we are diversifying and I am getting... You know, we just made a huge, huge company commitment to something, and uh, you know, a big, a big commitment. I, I mean, I wrote a very large check uh, for an initiative that we're uh, doing at Raw Voice Blueberry, and I'm kind of sworn to secrecy. I can't talk too much about it. I talked a little bit about it before, and everyone said you need to be quiet about that. So if you're paying attention in the past, uh, it it's okay, uh, but. You know, really what it boils down to is, you know, we're getting bigger and a lot more, a lot more support teams, you know, up to three people and uh, a lot more demands on me. So um, it's just the way it is. And uh, you never can build the bodies into a company as fast as you want to, to start taking over those, you know, those pieces of, of jobs that, you know, that, there's stuff that I really wish I could focus full time on, but I have to wear a couple of hats, and uh, that's just just the way it is. So um, it's n no different than any time before. But I'm not complaining, and I don't want to whine to you. This is not what this is all about. But uh, anyway, this is it, and we're going to continue on with the show, and hopefully, I can carry through and keep you guys awake. So. Uh, Aaron and Ray, welcome to the show tonight. We've got a bunch of people on watching live. Say hello in the chat room. If you're on YouTube, um, we're, we're, we're live as well at facebook.com forward slash Cochran. So for those of you that are, are on, uh, on Facebook tonight, please say hello. I would definitely appreciate it if you would do so. And I'm changing the... Uh, I wonder if we're having a little bit of... Let me see how YouTube is doing. I'm afraid to look. Oh, stream is good. Thought we might be slowing down over there. Guess not. All right. So, all right. We're okay. And uh, we'll continue rocking it here. But anyway, thanks everybody for being here. And um, anyway, that, that's it. Let's get into the tech stuff. Enough of me whining like a little baby. So, the Army, this is big. This is, I mean, this is really, really big. And I know that we've got some Army buds that are listening to this show. And I, this is probably like, 
secret squirrel stuff, you're probably not going to be able to tell us, but there's a lot of information in this Wired article. But the U.S. Army has increasingly used small consumer drones in the field. Purchasing was needed from consumer manufacturers like DGI. But documents indicate that the Army Aviation Directorate is now enforcing new orders banning DGI drones due to increased awareness of cyber vulnerabilities associated with DGI products. The document, first obtained by Small UAS News, doesn't explain the Army security concerns, but refers to some studies about DGI drones that first went out at the end of May. Previously, hackers have been able to jailbreak some DJI drones to control and modify things like safety features on the devices. Some reports have also indicated that DJI can gather local audio and even visual data from user flights. It's unclear what DJI can access without customer consent. But location and media data from an Army drone could, bad, 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 um, could uh, basically reveal extensive information about U.S. military operations. So here's the deal. We, we've talked about this on this show a lot, okay? Where does all our electronics come from? This phone comes from China, right? Designed by Apple. Still manufactured in China, right? How many of you have are buying cheap electronic stuff on Aki Arbor with, uh, you know, buying knockoff stuff, electronics. We get monitors that are being made in China, hard drives. I don't think they're being ma manufactured there yet, but a lot of electronics that come into the United States have its origins in China. So DGI is a Chinese company, okay? It's just, you know, we know that. Um, I'm a fan of the DJI drones, specifically because they're, they're just pretty awesome. But I'm not uh, the U.S. Army. <laughs> uh, I'm uh, not worried about uh, the metadata from my drone flights uh, going back to the Chinese government. But we have moved so much manufacturing and lost so much of our technical prowess to basically exporting it to China. Um, well, don't you think chips, stuff that comes there for electronics, sure, it could have stuff that's embedded that could, I'm not saying is, but could potentially call home to mama. The Chinese are brilliant at reverse engineering stuff. We see it at CES. They walk around in teams, and they're usually a team of three to five. One guy's carrying a camera. Another one's carrying a, a, a notebook. And another, they, they just basically go in. In matter of fact, companies have to cover stuff up. They see these people coming, and they have little drop cloths that they'll put over the top of gear and not let them take pictures. Because... They're going to go back and reverse engineer stuff that has been made. It, it's just so obvious. They'll be holding stuff up and turning it. And look, you know, I've, I've seen people with tape measures before. Measuring the size of stuff. So if DGI, if, if, they think, if this comes out, if this comes out that DGI is collecting data, This is, uh, this is scary. DJI has said in the past it doesn't track devices and can't access unit audio or video feeds. The company is at least able to make its drones comply with no-fly zones around the world. One of the administrators capabilities motivate customers to hack their drones. In the past, drone owners have even deployed jailbreaks for DJI devices so they can override safety controls like flight elevation maximums. DJI says that how much information it can access about a particular user hinges on what data sharing that company has granted, particularly through the DJI mobile apps. In April 2016, privacy policy notes that DJI products and services connect to servers hosted in the United States, China, and Hong Kong. Uh-huh. DJI makes civilian drones for peaceful purposes. Well, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> uh, 
uh, okay. Um, uh, bad guys, I am sure, are buying DJI drones. You know, and I can take my Mavic and in a non high density uh, environment where there's not a lot of RF, a lot of interference, I can go a long way. You know, I it was in the country at my at my mom's place, and it, 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 two miles out, and I still had good signal. I had to climb a little bit higher, but two miles out, and it was it was good. So, you know, people are buying these things; they're cheap. And if the army was buying them, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh, makes you go, yeah, okay. Because they're throwaway. Really, if you look at, you know, army budget, you know, order me a (laughs) hundred. That's cheaper than one bomb, you know. So um, it it makes you go, hmm, just a little bit. But the problem is they want to buy from a U.S. manufacturer. Good luck. Good luck. We just talked about it the other night on how one company went out of business. So therein lies an opportunity for some entrepreneur that's listening to this show, make a U.S. base. I get a lot of business at Blueberry, a lot of government business because we are 100% U.S. based. We have uh, accounts with the U.S. Senate, U.S. Represent, House Representatives, um, a variety of different uh, departments within the, the government, and they, they come to us because we're American based and we pass their security scans and um you know so you can do a lot of business with Uncle Sam if you have an American based company and have an American based product. You can get stuff sourced in, but you know, as long as you guarantee and it you know that you you've you know, you've looked everything over. You know, when you put package together, you can probably get some contracts. But it looks like the Army's looking for someone to buy drones from. So, uh, like I said, they, they probably buy them by the pallet load. This just brings me right into another article here, talking about an article in the New York Times, how U.S. tech, how a specific tech giant, and this is an example of one, is backing China's tech ambitions. As the Chinese government develops drones, the American technology giant Qualcomm is helping. The same goes for artificial intelligence, mobile technology, and supercomputers. Qualcomm is also working to help Chinese companies like Huawei break into overseas markets in support of China's Go Global campaign to develop big multinational brands. This has been the problem in China. Up until a few years ago, they had no big national brand. So when I say Sony, you think of Japan, right? You think of Samsung, you think of Korea. These are national brands. Now they're, you know, they're held in countries that we have good relationships with, and they're privately held, even though they're, you know, they're a publicly traded company. Okay, but the the government isn't in there doing oversight. You know, they're not they're not in there telling them here's a chip you need to put in your machine. So Qualcomm has been providing money, expertise, and engineering for Beijing's master plan. Big American companies fiercely protect their intellectual property and trade secrets. I do. I have trade secrets for, in, you know, we've been very hesitant to share stuff about things that we do in the podcast measurement space. That's why I have ESPN. That's why I have ABC. That's why I have these big companies that use our metric system. So, you know, these big American companies, they protect their intellectual property. But if they go to China to work, they have little choice to gain access to that market. American companies are forced to transfer technology, create joint ventures, lower prices, and aid homegrown players. Excuse me. These efforts form the backbone of President Xi Jiang's, or whatever his name, Jinping ambitions. And if I just insulted somebody, I'm sorry. I don't know. It, Pre- President Xi uh, ambitions to plan to ensure Chinese companies, military, 
and government dominate core areas of tech like AI and semiconductors. So you look at what's going on uh, in the Spratleys, and you look at what's going on the you look at what the Chinese are doing and in, in building new islands. And did I say Spratleys? The, basically, it's insane. And here you got Qualcomm. You've got AMD. You got Hewlett Packard Enterprise. They're working with Chinese company developer develop server chips, creating rivals to their own product. Intel is working with Chinese to build high-end mobile chips in competition with Qualcomm, which is give up information. IBM has agreed to transfer valuable tech that could enable China to break into the lucrative mainframe banking business. What are we doing? What are what, what we're doing this because there's cheap labor there. And there's a big market. The Qualcomm ran a full of the Chinese government get hitting in 2015 with a $975 million fine for anti-competitive behavior. To get back in Beijing's good graces, the company agreed to lower its prices in China, promised to shift, shift more high-end manufacturing to partners in China, and pledged to upgrade the country's tech capabilities. I'll be honest, we're, we're, we're stupid. We're so stupid. Do you guys agree? Am I right or am I wrong? I guess it depends on your perspective, right? I, I just, I just, I, I, you know, we haven't talked about this in a while, but this has been going on a long time. This is nothing new. You know, the airline industry is already being affected. They're competing with Boeing and Lockheed because guess what we did? We transferred engine technology from General Electric to China to build motors. So what did they do? They're, oh, all of a sudden, we got a new motor. <laughs> we, you know, and what is, oh, it looks a lot like a General Electric jet engine. You know, hmm, how did that happen? <laughs> You save a few bucks, and guess what you've done? You gave away everything. Ah, oh, I just, I just, I just shake my head. But I keep buying iPhones. I keep buying DJI drones. <laughs> All right, so you know. What do you do? What do you do? All right, Michelin. And these companies, I, I'm, I'm, okay, so I'm going to show you. Oh, it's a video. I thought it was like a big ad. Over on Engadget. Let me see if I can bring this picture up. Don't, I don't want to see. Okay, let me do this. I'm waiting for it to load for those. So what they did is they printed... A concept tire. They say it's 10 to 20 years out, but it's used in a lot of no petroleum based products went into making this tire. And they say it is as strong as a normal inflatable tire. This is, this is no inflation required. It looks like a, a mesh of some sort. And uh, it's got a tread. Now get this, a tread that can be reapplied. You just put it in the machine and it applies additional a, an additional layer of whatever this material is so that you have more tread. But uh, they're saying 10 to 20 years, this is what's going to be on our cars. So uh, environmentally, Oh my, what's going on with this thing? Oh, that little logo is pissing me off. I am going to have to send this keyboard in. 
All right, come back to me. All right. Ah. It doesn't want to stay in spot. It just takes off on its own. I'm going to have to call New Tech. It's just driving me crazy. So anyway, this Mitchell, this this tire is uh is what we're going to see uh in the future here, all right? Some students at um, University of Washington published a paper about the ability to trick a self-driving car. And, and what they did is they very simply just messed with a stop sign. And they, they put some uh, tape in some very strategic places and made the car think that it, instead of a stop sign that it was a... Uh, a 45 mile per hour speed limit sign. And they were able to trick the vehicle into not knowing that they, it was supposed to stop. So they did uh, have access to some of the information that the onboard system in the car uses to identify a stop sign. But this is kind of crazy. You know, we will, we laugh when we we roll up on a stop sign and there's bullet holes in it, or someone has done something they've defaced it, and you know it's you know whatever they've done. But um, researchers created two different sorts of attacks on self-driving car system using a, a whole lot of math and just a little bit of printing, and uh, they use the car classifier, a part within its vision system that tells the car what an object is, and they use this to basically. Uh, create a uh, you know a pixelated stop sign and uh, and confuse the car. So it's pretty impressive what they've done here. So, but you know, aren't smart vehicles smart enough to know that there's a stop sign? This is supposed to be a four-way stop. Isn't there some sort of uh, in its database? Doesn't it know there's a stop sign there? without having to see the stop sign. Man, you guys have been on some streets before and the stop sign has been like turned, you know, sideways. You can barely tell if the stop sign's for you or for the for the other uh the other lane. We've all been in that situation. So to me it, it seems like okay, this is an interesting um interesting hack, but what is it is it really going to trick a vehicle cuz doesn't the the vehicle's database know it's supposed to stop? If it just uses stop signs to stop, man, there's going to be smart cars blowing stop signs all the time. Because you can't, it's half the time, you know, sometimes you can't see, what happens in a, when it's been snowing and half of a sign is covered up with snow? We've seen that, right? You've seen where, where you've rolled up to a stop on it in the wintertime and half this, or the, it's got a lot of, a lot of snow on it. So, yeah, I, I we'll see where this leads. And luckily, we're you know we're not quite there on this full, full autonomous stuff, but we will be. Hey, MIT is using radio waves and artificial intelligence to more accurately study sleep. Sleep tracking, uh, excuse me, sleep tracking has moved into the bedroom with apps, peripherals, and wearables that use movement of our uh, device's microphone uh, to figure out when you're sleeping awake. You know. Folks like me that has sleep apnea, um, you know, if we're going in for a sleep study, we have to wear a bunch of stuff on our head and heart monitors and a strap. And, you know, it's you never get a full night's sleep when you're in one of those studies. You get, like, naps. So, but these researchers have started using radio signals, and so RF, and artificial intelligence logarithms to analyze uh, pa patient's sleep stages without physical sensors, and they're reporting a, a high rate of accuracy. This could help people with sleep apnea, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, epilepsy, all of who can have sleep disruption that are that's hard to detect. Now, my sleep apnea machine actually tracks how well I've slept, and I can actually see now a graph of, of you know, it knows based upon my breathing or if my mask leaks a little bit. Um, uh, my no actually, my nose pillows leak. So they're saying that 
as they re refine this, that at some point our home Wi-Fi may know when we're dreaming and could monitor whether you're we're having a deep enough sleep. Um, and study leader Dinah Katabali in the statement said our vision is develop is developing health sensors that will disappear into the background and capture physiological signals and important health metrics without asking the users to change their behavior. Okay, so the more we're monitored, the more insurance companies, life insurance groups are all going to know about us. They're going to know when we went drinking, if we've smoked a cigarette. They're going to know if we had a cigar. They're going to know if we didn't get a good night's sleep. And all of us are going to have our insurance policies rated upon all this stuff that's tracking us right now, right? So I'm at the gym. I'm using my Apple Watch. I'm tracking my workout. I'm saving it. You know, that data is going in the cloud supposedly safe. Uh-huh. Had one guy tell me a couple of weeks ago that he refuses to use any tech. He's got a little notebook. He he writes down what he's done in his workouts because he doesn't trust anyone with his with his information. So uh, that's going the hardcore way. But um, hmm, you know, I'm sure they're tracking the vitamins and supplements that we're all buying too, right? All right, we're gonna switch gears completely here. We went from uh, Chinese spying, hacking, to, uh, you know, remote control vehicles, to hacking them, to, you know, monitoring ourselves when we're sleeping. But, Jack, are you listening? Apparently, passengers are not ready for airplanes that don't have a pilot in them yet. <laughs> and uh, there's a good article on The Verge saying pilotless flights may be in our future. But according to a new study by Swiss Bank UBS, consumers are not quite ready to embrace it. I do you think? Out of the 8,000 people surveyed for the report, more than half said they were unwilling to travel in a pilotless plane even if the prices were cheaper. Overall, only 17% said they would likely take an uncrewed flight, but that percentage rose to 27% when reducing the sample size to those 18 to 24 and 31% with those aged 25 to 34. Okay. You have an unmanned UAV. That's cool. It crashes. No one dies. I have got... All right, so you guys know I flew in the Navy. I was a back-end guy in P3s. Uh, 10,000 hours. You guys do the math. You, you divide that out. I mean, and I had a number of years physically in the air. Uh, we have... Uh, Pilots that listen to the show, you know, Jack, retired uh, American Airlines pilot, uh, TriCaster Jack, who is was the senior most pilot at, Air, at American. He was an instructor. He was fully checked out in the 777. You know, this this guy has some hours. And, uh, you know, we talked about hands-off landing and all that stuff before. You know, nine out of ten times, probably the landing – by the plane can be good. But when you got like a serious crosswind or something shifts or you you know sometimes there's this there's this thing you, when you guys drive a car um the best example I can give to you is how many of you have ever been in a car that has went into a slide. In other words, you've lost control. The back of the car has kicked out. Where do you feel that first? You feel it between your two cheeks. That's where you feel it. You feel it in your ocoli. You feel it in your butt. <laughs> so pilots are strapped into their seat, and they have their hands on the yoke, well, one hand on the yoke, one hand on the throttles, or their eyes forward. And when the airplane does something weird, it's usually their butt that tells them first. <laughs> And I have been in some landings where you, like, clap to the pilot later. You, you, you do this, you know, this slow roll of applause because you know he had his hands full getting this thing on the deck. Sometimes they want to crab. That's where you can be basically looking out the passenger window and seeing down the center line of the runway. There are times when you just need a pilot in the seat where his brain can say, 
Put him to the firewall. Let's go around. <laughs> okay? Because you, there, there is, there is a, there comes a point when you're in a landing, when things have gotten too far along where your brain wants to land, but you know you better firewall that bad boy and go around and do it again. Now, most of you have never been in an airline flight where the pilot has aborted a landing. You it could be like fog on the runway, or it could be uh, somebody, it's, uh, maybe an airplane hasn't taxied off. Maybe that's the reason you've aborted. Most airline flights, you, you get her on the ground in one shot. But if you've ever been in one where the airplane's kind of jockeying around a little bit, and all of a sudden, you know, the flaps start coming up, you feel the power being poured on, and the, the, the wheels are coming up, you know that pilot's had his hands full. I don't want a computer to land on one of those landings. The computer might just say, uh, that doesn't compute. Uh, let's 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 land. So even in the drone world today, even the drone world, the most the place where most of the accidents happens is takeoff and landings. You know that's the most dangerous part of a. It really what it is from the time they uh, you leave the gate to the time you get to about ten thousand feet. That's the danger period, and when you are Descending from 10,000 feet to your at the gate, that's the most dangerous part of the flight. Usually the mid, mid cruise is like, you know, that, that's nothing. Uh, where, where do crashes happen? On landings, right? <laughs> you know, once in a while an airplane breaks up because of, uh, you know, metal fatigue or something. You know, but that happens much, much less than... You know, something happening when a run an airplane goes off the end of a runway or something. So uh, I don't know. I I, I don't want to fly anytime soon without a without a pilot up front. Um, when there's a vehicle aircraft that has no one in it, sure, let let the drone do it. You know, but still, most of those drones are landed. You know, they have a guy that does nothing but take off his landings all day. You know, most of those drones don't land themselves per se. This is this is this is, next article is like makes you go hmm. Do you guys didn't even know what Loran is? And I have some people that have just raised their eyebrow a little bit. There's probably one percent of this audience that knows what Loran is. And um, Loran was an acronym for Long Range Navigation. Loran C is really was considered obsolete by most when GPS became widely available in 2010. And, uh, you know, the U.S. Coast Guard declared it was no longer required for the United States and Canada to shut down their Loran Sea beacons between 2010 and 2015. Most aircraft today um, are largely guided from gate to gate via global positioning system. But according to this article over in Ars Technica, there's now an increasing concern over reliance of navigation realm of GPS since GPS signals from a satellite are relatively weak. You think about it, that satellite's out there, you know, 65,000 miles away or whatever it is. They are prone to interference, accidental, deliberate, accidental or deliberate, and GPS can be ba uh, jammed or spoofed. Portable equipment can easily drown them out or broadcast fake signals that can make GPS receivers give incorrect position data. The same is true of the Russian-built GLONASS system. So over the past few years, U.S. Coast Guard reported multiple episodes of GPS jamming at non-U.S. ports, including an incident reported uh, to the Coast Guard's Navigation Center this June that occurred on the Black Sea. South Korea has claimed that several on several occasions, North Korea has jammed GPS near the border, interfering with aircraft and fishing fleet navigation. And in the event of a war, it's very possible that an adversary could take GPS satellites out GPS satellites with anti-satellite weapons or some sort of cyber attack on a satellite network. So they had the, um, 
Director of National Intelligence. This is, again, an article in ArsTechnica.com. He told the Senate Committee on Intelligence in May that the global threat of electronic warfare attacks against space systems will expand in the coming years in both the number both number and type of weapons. Development will very likely focus on jamming capabilities against dedicated military satellite systems, synthetic aperture radar imaging satellites, and enhanced capabilities against global navigation systems, such as the U.S. Global Positioning System. Yes, that system that is in your car. The risk of GPS has caused a number of countries to take a second look at terrestrial radio navigation. Oh, ho, ho. The ELORAN system get is, gets enhanced accuracy in much the same way that enhanced GPS, many of you probably have never heard about this, enhanced GPS does. I don't know if this enhanced GPS is available to civilians or not, uh, but it squeezes greater accuracy out of, oh, it does, out of civil GPS signals for tasks such as surveying and mapping. Uh, and it uses something called differential uh, correction. And what that really is, is that they have a stationary receiver at a known fixed location, checks the signal arriving from the beacon, and measures the difference between its actual distance from the beacon and the distance calculated from the signal. It's just a basic math problem. And based on the differential between the signals, the timestamp, and the time was actually received, they can get their accuracy increased. So the ELORAN system is now being introduced, and it is in a lower radio frequency wave, 90 to 110 kilohertz. So what is old is new again. And uh, I just hope that all the airlines and everyone hasn't taken out their inertial navigation systems. And for those of you that don't know what an inertial navigation system is, you've got GPS. It's GPS receiver. You can do navigation with GPS. But if you lose GPS, how do you find where you're going? Well, an inertial navigation system uh, in a modern system today is in a closed loop with GPS. And basically, you, you, when you start the airplane up, and you power it up, you put in your position where you're at into the navigation system. A gyro stabilizes, an actual gyro, a powered gyro. And as the aircraft moves, the gyro changes its position and knows because of accelerometers where it's at. Before GPS, that's all we had. And how we would update the inertial navigation system was doing star fixes and updating that way. So the inertial navigation system now tied in with a, a global positioning system. They close loop themselves and they can update. Um, so I don't know what commercial airlines have done. If they went away with the INS and have GPS only, I, I couldn't imagine so. But I think Probably, I would think most military would still have inertial navigation systems in their airplanes and wouldn't rely on GPS completely. So, uh, you know, in case there's a war and GPS is taken out, the military will be able to continue to do what they do, but the reliance on GPS is just massive. It really is. So this radio, this article in our Static is a good one. Uh, this is the article of the day, if I had a, a clip to play like they do over at uh, No Agenda. I'm going to be like way long. I've, I've only gotten like two steps into the show tonight. Probably won't get all the way through it. Hey, there's a new Nissan Leaf. It's seen leaked images. If you like the Leaf, I got a friend that hates them. He calls them bug eaters because they're always at the charging stations. Also, there's a good uh, you know, school starts here tomorrow. So traffic goes from okay to oh my God. So they've got a good article on uh, Google.com talking about how going back to school doesn't have to mean to be back in traffic jams. Talks about tools you can use. I'll have the link up in the show notes on that. NASA's got a complete video guide to the total eclipse. Boy, I tell you, these articles are just rocking. Everyone, this eclipse thing, man, is huge. Uh, what are we going to talk about after the eclipse in 14 days? Also, there's some first light pictures of the Galaxy Note 8 surface. I'm looking at this picture. This phone is massive. It's narrow and long. It's huge. If they've got the scale right on this thing, holy smokes. 
Hmm. Link will be up in the show notes. Well, back in February, remember the Samsung boss was charged for uh, bribery and stuff? Lee Jia Yong. He may be facing up to uh, 12 further years in prison over his role in corruption scandals that forced the South Korean president out of office. So uh, you can't do the crime. You can't do the time. Don't do the crime. Also, did you just buy a new Amazon Echo? Well, there's lots of skills that are coming out. So there's 15 essential beep skills. There are an article over at uh, makeuseof.com. Uh, CNN's got one. Jeopardy's got one. Domino's Pizza has one. Nest Cam has one. Cool. You can use your beep show to actually see your Nest Camera. Fitbit has one. Skill Finder. Where's my phone? Seven-minute workout. All kinds of stuff. Lots of skills. You almost have to have a cheat sheet list of skills to know what is in your uh, Amazon Echo. You know, are you, are you a fan of F FX? FX is going to stream ad-free for 6 bucks, but sadly it's only for Comcast cable users. Are these folks, what, what's wrong with these folks? The latest major TV provider offers a subscription TV streaming service is called FX Networks. Home of American Horror Story, The Americans, and plenty of other shows without America in its title. Its new FX Plus service will launch September 5th. Its shows will stream commercially free, and it's actually cheaper than Netflix at $6 per month. But there's a catch. The only people who can get it are those who are subscribed to Comcast TV, a.k.a. Xfinity TV, cord cutters. You can't get it. What is wrong with them? You have an online streaming service, and you're going to make it only available to Comcast cable subscribers. Someone needs to be taken out behind the building and taken to the woodshed. For those of you that don't know what that reference is, being taken to the woodshed is taken to the back and get a whooping. <laughs> Someone over there needs a whooping. What is wrong with those folks? Amazing. Hey, over in Android Central, they've got a cool antenna called the Mohu Metro TV antenna. It's 15 bucks for you cable cutters out there. I'll have the link up in the show notes for you to check that out. Good find on that one, Kurt. HBO hackers reportedly leak emails, and they're demanding money. And they're basically saying they're the 15th media company that's a victim. And they're trying to get cash out of them. They're going to be releasing more stuff. So we'll see if HBO pays the ransom. But uh, so far, they're not paying. But uh, they're saying there's more coming. But they got emails, too. So they got in deep. Over at Mac Rumors, what's new in the iOS 11 Beta 5? iCloud messages have been delayed. New icons, control center music changes, and more. So... Uh, if you're interested in what's going on with the iOS 11 beta, I'll have that link up in the show notes for you. Remember Faraday Future? We talked about them at CES. They, you know, they were on their last legs out of money. And believe it or not, they have bought or signed a lease on a turnkey manufacturing facility in, of all places, Hanford, California. I was stationed in Lemoore, California from 88 to 91, and... Uh, Hanford is a little town, about 15, or actually a pretty big town, just uh, 10 or so miles away from Lamore, California, where I live. Uh, my kids, uh, my oldest daughter was born in, uh, in a hospital in Hanford, California. So uh, very, very cool. So anyway, uh, they've, got a, they've been given some money, $13 million, to do this, and they're trying to get their manufacturing process up. So Faraday Future is still, you know, they had they, they had to put their company's headquarters up as collateral. So they're still they they still have a big challenge ahead. Netflix just made its first ever acquisition. It's it's buyout of the comic book publisher Myler Myler World was announced uh, before Monday's opening bell, and this is the first first thing that Netflix has ever bought. And uh, you can see they're going after the superhero strategy to be able to buy some storylines. So smart on them. 
And I haven't watched Game of Thrones this week, so I'm no spoilers, anybody, please. Firefox, if you are using a Firefox, Firefox version 55 is getting VR support tomorrow. All right. Boy, the um, the rhetoric over the Internet, a very broken thing, specifically the net neutrality fight, has gotten uh, pretty heavy. A number of Democrats, uh, obviously, have sent letters to the FCC saying what you're trying to do is not allowed by law. Um, with, you can't do this without legislation. So uh, it looks like lawsuits are going to be coming. So we'll see where this leads. But uh, they are definitely uh, not going down without a fight and uh, make, giving Paget a hard time as, as, as much as possible. Oh, I should have had this earlier. The Pentagon has approved a new policy allowing military bases to shoot down private and commercial drones that are considered a threat. <laughs> First of all, you can't fly a drone on a military base. You, it is not legal. Um, you, you cannot. Uh, so how are they going to shoot them down? Shotgun? They're not going to launch a missile at it for sure because yeah, contrary to belief, it's just not like they have missiles parked anywhere. So what are they going to use? A shotgun, sniper rifle, <laughs> but uh, well, you know, if there's a drone in the air, they're going to blast it. They have permission to do so. Google has perfected a new software algorithm that allows to perfect photos before you even take them, and it works in just microseconds. As soon as you click, it will actually process the sig the the picture to to enhance it for you. And uh, this is going to make itself into a 20 milliseconds is what it takes to, to do image contrast and tone down brightness, whatever needs changes may, may, may need to be done. Again, 20 milliseconds is 50 times a second. And uh, this information comes from an MIT doctoral student and lead author of the paper, of the specific paper. And uh, he started working with researchers from Google last year to explore how neural networks might learn to mimic specific photographic styles. So they could see that this software is going to go into a mobile phone at some point. So uh, pretty exciting stuff. The pictures may get better. For those of you that live in the UK, new data privacy laws will let Brits erase childhood social posts. This is fantastic. The UK Data Protection Act began looking long in the two some time ago. It was introduced in 1998 when the Internet was a very different place. So um, today the government has published more details on the upcoming data protection bill, which will update laws to ensure they fit for the hyperconnected era. Delivering on a conservative party manifesto, the bill will introduce a new right for people to instruct social networks so that anything they posted before the age of 18. This has been called the right to innocence and will mean you can more easily purge social media activity that's embarrassing, embarrassing or no longer reflects you as an adult. This is awesome because kids will do stupid stuff, right? Well, there's 18 and above that will do stupid stuff too, but at least 18 and below, you can give them semi-benefit of the doubt, smack them inside the head, and then they can go get their stupid stuff deleted, right? Caution all my kids. I've only got one that's under 18 yet. Putting one online, it's there for life. Be careful. And uh, he had something. He was in a YouTube video of his buddies the other day, and I'm like, did you read the title? He did. I said, do you like your membership at the gym? Yeah. He said, ask your buddy to change the title. And uh, his buddy did. But I'm like, that was dumb. What's your buddy do? You guys didn't do anything wrong, but you tried to do clickbait to make people think that you did. And the facility sees it, they're going to kick you out. So, you know, just kids are just stupid sometimes, right? So anyway, um, I think this is good in the UK. Google is no longer forcing its searches on Android users in Russia. So that's a big change. T-Mobile is giving seniors a discount on unlimited data. How much are they giving them off? Uh, mobile thinks it, T-Mobile thinks it can do better. It's launching a one unlimited 55 plus plan on August night. For the most part, acknowledges that many seniors use smartphones 
offer gives you two lines with unlimited data, talk, and text, $60 per month, and, and, and or $50 for one line. There's a few gotchas, but still must be a huge do, deal for empty nesters. Aha. Uh -huh. So if you're 55 plus, go get a discount. Uh, that looks like a pretty cool deal. And for folks that are on fixed budgets, every every penny you can save is, is awesome. Hey, good news today. You know, last year the personal audio podcasting patent uh, was overturned. Uh, it was a battle that was done by EFF and another and uh, basically went up against this behemoth. They did a, a crowdsource funding to pay for the lawyers and stuff. But a year after taking up the case, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit has ruled in favor of Electronic Frontier Foundation in its challenge against podcasting patent troll personal audio. The decision is a massive relief. I bet you Adam Carolla is wishing he wouldn't have settled with uh, these folks because he wrote them a massive check. I think well, upwards of $160,000 instead of, uh, you know, fighting. He, he, I mean, he may be not able to undo that. We'll see. Intel has finalized the Skylake X processor specification, 18 cores, 4.4 gigahertz, turbo at 165 watts, all coming available on September 25th. So uh, the Mac Daddy of this is going to be, let's look, the processor type. Huh. It's really hard to read these. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The top processor will have 18 to 36 cores, base clock of 2.6, turbo clock of 4.2, turbo max clock of 4.4, 1.375 4 megabytes of L3 cache, 44 PCI lanes, four memory channels, 2666 DDR4 speed, 165 watts, 1999. Yes, $1,999 for Skylake X processor chip. Wall Street Journal is reporting the end of typing. The next billion mobile users rely on video and voice. I'm going to tell you, video text, uh, audio texting, if I'm in my car and I'm trying to send a message, this stupid thing gets it wrong about 75% of the time. If I'm in a quiet environment, it works great. But if I'm on a hands-free trying to talk to this thing, sending a text, oh, my gosh. There are certain words it refuses to even acknowledge. It's got to get better. Typing is not over on our mobile phones. It is not. No way, no how. YouTube has updated its app. You now can do it. It's got a messaging feature in it. So you can now share a YouTube video within the YouTube apps amongst your contacts. So now you're going to be getting text messages from your friends with a YouTube video link. According to the register, some survey data come back, and Comcast subscribers say the U.S. cable giant's notorious billing system is the worst and most infuriating thing about the company. The outages are second. <laughs> oh. Out of 41,000 complaints, 21,388 was had issues with the bill because the bill says nothing. The bill is as obtuse as it possibly can be. It is, re Ugh, I, you know, you get your bill and you're like, what did I pay for? Jeez. Uber co-founder says that the prior CEO will not be back. Well, he's out. Uh, too many missteps. He's been shown the door. Facebook is venturing into Zillow's territory with targeted real estate advertising. And I know there's some real estate people on the show. Okay. But as soon as we get control and we can list our homes on our own, you know you don't have to have a realtor to sell your house, right? You do not need, now it helps you, but you're going to pay that you know, 3%, 3%. You're going to pay 6% to do it. But do you know you can sell your house in a private owner sale? It's simple, okay? Numerous friends that have done it. So if you're in a hot market and houses are going like, pan sound like hotcakes, you don't need an advertiser. The only thing we need to get past is M the MLS system, right? 
Well, Zillow and Google uh, might be helping us get around these folks. Uh, I know I'm going to get hate mail now from realtors out there. And you're going to tell me the 52 reasons why a person needs a, 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 needs a realtor. Here in Hawaii, people are showing up with suitcases full of money to buy houses. <laughs> no inspection. They don't care. They want it. Now, I'm not in an area that has that. But there are houses in Hawaii like that. And you just, you know, you just go and they, they show up with the cash and you, you get a, you know, a, uh, you know, get someone, they work the title and do the paperwork. And you don't need a re realtor to do that. And you don't have to pay that realtor's commission. Help you sell. And those types of companies usually take like 1% versus 3%. So uh, they help you sell. Look into that if you're in a hot housing market. France and Germany want Apple and Google to pay their taxes. Well, good for them. Make them pay. Make them pay the taxes in their con there, and maybe they'll bring some of that cash back home. You know, maybe they won't be trying to hide so much of it overseas. This is fantastic. Google, Apple, Apple Facebook, and Amazon begin paying their fair share of taxes. It's about time. They're looking to make them pay. It is true. Europe must learn to defend its economic interests more firmly. China does it. And the reason we do it so much, that's the way people leave the United States and find tax shelters outside the U.S. Get a solar system on your roof like I do? Hackers could exploit solar power equipment. Flaws to cripple green grids claim a researcher. A Dutch researcher says he's found a way to cause mischief on power grids by exploiting software bugs in solar power systems. Internet of things. I have a little device outside my house that plugs into a power line. I have the, the power line receiver in the home connected to a, a, a switch that basically sends data back to end phase about my, my solar panels. It says if they're healthy or not, if there's a problem. So this does not surprise me at all. Well, there's big dust up over at Google. Google's fired an employee who wrote an internal memo blasting the company's diversity policies, creating a firestorm across Silicon Valley. Part of what he said was okay, but then he went and said some really bad stuff about women. <laughs> I mean, like, wow. Like, wh really? You didn't think you weren't going to get fired? for posting that? He had basically said that Google doesn't, they frown on conservatives. Okay, that probably, that alone probably wouldn't have got him fired. But then he said some stuff about the ladies that just is, I was just like, his 10-page member accused Google of silencing conservative political opinions and argued, now, ladies, you, you, your blood pressure is going to go up, that biological differences play a role in the shortage of women in tech and leadership positions. <laughs> Dude, I would have fired you. What were you? You need some training. I, I, I'm shocked. Again, he would probably have been okay if he just talked about Google silencing conservative political opinions. <laughs> but the diversity stuff saying biological differences play a role in the shortage of women in tech? Ah, uh, I have some great coders that are women. You know, they get paid equal. It's just, oh my God, unbelievable. The new Google Glass is on sale today, but they're saying don't buy it. $1,829. It's an enterprise edition being released by a specific company for some um, some functions. So unless you want to be a cool, I got some Google Glass for sale. Anybody wants to buy a set of Google Glass? I'll sell mine. 
make me an offer I can't refuse. Okay? I think they're already collector's edition, so you, you, you don't go cheap. Geeknews at gmail.com. You guys got to watch this video. Everyone's got to see this video. It's a news story about a driverless van in Virginia. All I'm going to say, it's really, really, really bizarre. I'm not going to spoil the punchline for you, but this is very entertaining. And uh, let's just put it this way. A university is behind it, but people are freaked out seeing a driverless van. Okay? Link will be up in the show notes. You definitely want to check it out. Tesla is trying to sell $1.5 million in junk bonds. They got a B-minus rating. They're trying to raise money to be able to pay for all the Model 3 production. So I bet you they're going to get it. I bet you that they will sell these bonds. Probably won't get a very good interest rate. But, uh, hmm. They need cash. A lot of cash. Also, CNET has a good uh, pictorial 18 pictures of some cool astronaut pictures. Always fun to see stuff from the International Space Station. Also, Hubble Telescope sees emerging David and Goliath galaxy pairs. And a little video about it. So pretty cool. Pretty cool to see that. And what do I have? Oh, I got some deals here. I've got Anchor Speaker. We've got uh, some vacuum cleaners. Oh, by the way, uh, my Roomba should be here. I got the Mac Daddy one, the good one. So I'll let you know how it goes with my uh, new aut. In my kids, they're not happy because I both put a little note on their desk with a um, uh, invoice. Uh, failure to sweep the house is resulting in a um, house contribution of two hundred and fifty dollars each, uh, so that the Roomba can take up the majority of the vacuuming duties. Um, since they uh, are living here for free, uh, they can help pay for some of the tech that keeps the house clean. So uh, uh, my wife is not super happy about me buying that, but my kids are uh, even more unhappy that they have to give Dad two hundred fifty dollars each. So uh, I could I should have charged them five hundred each, right? Because it was eight ninety, I think, was what it cost me for it. So, uh, but I look forward to having it here on duty and vacuuming my floor when I'm not home or when I'm doing whatever. <laughs> all right. It didn't take you too long past the show. We got through it all. I hope you had a good time tonight. I'm still up, right? Energy drink held me through, right? Got folks still on YouTube watching. Thanks for being here. Folks still on YouTube. Aaron and Ray. Hey, everyone, when you, when you come on the Facebook Live thing, make sure you say hello. Okay? Got to do that. Got to say hello. Okay? And, uh, oh, we ha I think we had someone say hello in the chat room, too. Oh, no, that was a different date. But uh, I don't think there was any email that came in today. Let me real quick check. You guys don't love me anymore. Um, geeknews at gmail.com. We've been together so long, you just listen to me. That's okay, too. But I want to hear from you from time to time. Come on. Don't be shy. Let me know what's going on, what kind of cool gadgets you're buying. What's one thing that you bought that you can't live without now? Uh, but anyway, that's that's it, folks. We'll be out of here. We'll see you back on Thursday. My name is Todd Cochran. You can email me here, geeknews at gmail.com, geeknews at gmail.com. It's been my pleasure to bring the show. Everyone have a great week. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.